Hi everyone, welcome to this video. My name is T, if you're new here. So, you see the title, you know what we're talking about today, but I gotta say, the language in this video will be a little bit censored just for monetization purposes. Instead of saying fat, I'm gonna be saying full figured. It's childish, I know, but so is the YouTube algorithm. So I saw a tweet the other day and I wish I would have screenshot it because I really want to give the person credit. But basically it showed two supporting characters and it says something along the lines of when you're the best part of the show, but they cast you to support the annoying main character, something of the sort. And I couldn't agree more. I also noticed that conveniently, all of those women are full figured. Conveniently, damn near all full-figured actresses serve the same purpose. Full-figured black women are nearly always casted as a supporting character who is typically there for comic relief, outspoken, and as of late, over-sexualized. I'm not, I don't just mean confident, but like, it seems like almost every other word out of her mouth has to let the audience know that she is out here fucking. And that's about it. Funny, promiscuous support. It's very rare that we learn anything about those characters other than that. So some quick examples for you. Kelly from Insecure. Sharice from High Fidelity. Tasty from Orange is the New Black. And I know what you're thinking. That's because they're supporting characters. They're there for support. Of course we're not going to learn that much about them. They're not in the main cast. And I hear you. But what about Nikki Parker? She was the main character in her show, and she was still written to be this overly obsessive, man-crazy woman. She didn't get her happy ending to like the last episode. Or how about Annie from the show Shrill? That entire storyline is about her having the audacity to be the main character in her own life. Natasha Rothwell, who plays Kelly on Insecure and is also a writer in that show, did an interview with Refinery29 where she actually addressed playing the full-figured friend and she said, I love my curves. That's a big part of who I am. It's not something I'm ashamed of. To me, it's so exciting to just see Kelly being visible. It's been so much fun to really explore her as a character and not just a caricature. I think a lot of times it's just a funny fat friend. They're not fully grounded. They're not making them a whole person. That's why I think Kelly is different. Now, I love Natasha Rothwell, but this interview breaks my fucking heart. That part about her being visible, as black women, it's already hard enough to get accurate and consistent representation in the media. But once we do get that representation, if you don't look a certain way, you might not even make the cut. And she's just happy to be visible, to be seen. I mean, I think that's what she meant. I really hope I'm not misinterpreting her. But skipping forward to the part where she says, it's been so much fun to really explore her as a character and not just a caricature. I think a lot of times it's just a funny friend. They're not fully grounded. They're not making them a whole person. Oh. I would argue that that exact same thing is happening on Insecure right now. You know, by the time I'm recording this video, episode six just happened, so that could change, but we're four seasons in. We are like four seasons and like five years into this show, and I don't even know Kelly's last name. I don't even know her last name. She has been a character that I have known for five years, and I don't even know her last name. And I know the last name of everybody in that crew. Issa D, Molly Carter, Tiffany Dubois, Kelly, Kelly, do y'all know Kelly's, do y'all know Kelly's last name? Four seasons, five years, don't even know her last name. All that I know about Kelly is her humor, her promiscuity, and her occupation. And the only reason I know about her job is because Issa went to her that one episode for financial advice. But that's it. Yet every single time she's on the screen, she's the star of the show. She is a scene stealer. If Kelly is in that scene, you better believe she's delivering the best joke and the best punchline, okay? She's a fan favorite. Everybody loves Kelly. She be carrying the whole team on her back. And I don't even know her last name. See, little things like that, it often goes unnoticed, but I don't think we realize just how intentional that characterization is and how closely it imitates real life. In doing research for this video, I came across an article, a Daily Mail article that was written in 07, but it still rings true today. It's a great article. It's harsh. 
it's so harsh but it needs to be said um so i'm just gonna quote a few lines from it but of course as always if you would like to read the full article the link will be listed in my description so it's called why every woman needs a friend there's a truth universally acknowledged that any woman will look a hundred times more beautiful when standing next to a friend that was the first line so like the tone was immediately set that this writer was playing no fucking games just look at poor kate moss life hasn't been treating her too well as of late so who does she turn to in her time of need old and equally glamorous friends such as madonna and sadie frost no the 15 stone front woman of indie band the gossip beth ditto that's because kate knows that whatever her troubles when pictured next to ditto she looked every inch the supermodel because you're friend is no competition. You can take her out manhunting, safe in the knowledge that all eyes will be on you and there will always be someone around to watch your drink and guard your handbag. Now might I add, there was no resolution to that article. Like there was no, okay, yeah, but obviously that's wrong and here's how we should fix it. No. She was like, this is the truth, swallow it whole. And the immense discomfort that I felt when I read that, not just for the first time, but like just now for this video, especially because that article is 13 years old, but it still can be applied to our behavior today, that could only mean one thing. That could only mean one thing. I was forced to confront yet another subconscious bias and I have to hold myself accountable. We all do. We all do. Society and the media. Because yes, art imitates life, but subsequently life imitates art. So if we are subconsciously treating our full-figured friends this way, and we keep seeing the same one-dimensional bullshit in TV and movies and the media in general, we start to think it's okay. We start to believe that this is the only role that these women should be allowed to play in real life. That they're just supporting characters in our movie. That they're just accessories kept around to fluff up our self-esteem. And that's not true. That's not true. It's not right. It's wrong. It's disgusting. It's ignorant. And it needs to be talked about. The stigma of fatness in general is still so present. Like, I just know that we are ages behind where we should be uh, when it comes to that. It's really frustrating because it doesn't need to be that big of a deal. Like, fatness just does not need to be that big of a deal, but we always make it that big of a deal. Am I lying? Like, do we need to have the Lizzo conversation again? But I think if we just continue to hold ourselves accountable and we continue to listen to these women and tell their stories how they want them to be told, not just from the perspective of how we see them. <laughs> Let me say that one again. If we continue to listen to these women and tell their stories how they want them to be told, not just from the perspective of how we see them, then progress can be made. But thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it to the end. This is a much shorter video than I usually do, I know, but I really just didn't want to overstep. And I mean, hey, maybe this conversation can be brought up again on a podcast. Hmm, you never know. We speak new beginnings into existence every day, B. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Be sure to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, however you're feeling today. And if you liked, don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye.